We all know uh, climate change has many, many impacts uh, in uh, our life and in all areas of social life and in society. And one part is the agriculture. And uh, we all know that uh, what climate change can do, we know flooding seasons, we know drought seasons and so on and so on. What brings human beings to the edge of their existence? Finally, uh, if we do the business as usual, and uh, Walter has nicely presented, what can be done to overcome these problems and to do something and to bring really a solution to the people uh, on site? And um, I'm happy to have Lucio here. Uh, he will speak about some uh, solutions, some experiences from the Brazilian side and also from the angle of uh, what climate change means in Brazil as far as agriculture is concerned. And uh, I hope we will get uh, a nice overview and uh, have a spotlight on what is going on, what is happening in Brazil. So um, his talk will be about strategies and challenges for soil and water management and increasing resilience to climate change in agricultural production system in Brazil. But before um, you start, uh, let me say a few words about you. Lucio is a Brazilian economic uh, engineer who works as a senior researcher at the National Soil Research Center of the Brazilian Agricultural Research Corporation, a long na name, but uh, we have a shorter one, it's called Embrapa Solos. Uh, he is a specialist in soil science and land use planning um, with over 30 years uh, of experience in the field focusing on the sustainable use of soil and water resources. Um, you studied uh, agriculture engineering at the Federal Rural University of Rio de Janeiro. Uh, you graduated, graduated uh, and you made your doctorate uh, as well um, in the field of agronomy. agronomy. And um, at Embrapa, where you are still working, uh, you are coordinating research, development and technological innovation projects in the area of soil use, management, conservation and recovery since 1996. Currently, he is a coordinator of the project participative construction of the Brazilian National Plan for Sustainable Soil and Water Management. He uh, holds various positions uh, at Embrapa Solos, uh, including technical head, uh, being technical head of and deputy general head from 2004 to 2008 and technical director of the agricultural research company of the state of Rio de Janeiro. Aluizio. We are happy to have you here, and I would like to, uh, to ask you to take the floor and uh, to report about agriculture and climate impact in Brazil. Thank you very much. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for being here. I would like uh, to thank uh, the Organization Commission, especially Professor Andres for the invitation and the Professor Bjorn for the support. I will present the following topics. General characters of the Brazilian territory and the agriculture, impacts of climate change on Brazilian agriculture, strategies and the challenges to increase the resilience of agricultural systems, and the final considerations and the reflections. In Brazil, has six biomes. Amazon is the most preserved, and the Atlantic forest is the most degraded. In these pictures, it's possible to observe the original situation and today. In Brazil, 61% the native vegetation is preserved. Only 30% is dedicated in agricultural production. The large land use is occupied by pasture. Until the early 70s, the agricultural economy 
was mainly based on the cultivation of coffee and sugar cane, where major importers of foods that make up the Brazilian basic food basket, such as rice, beans, meat, and milk. With the occupation of the Cerrado region, the agriculture scenario began to be transformed, thanks to advances in soil knowledge, genetic improvement, and management practices. Today, we are one of the world's largest producers of coffee, sugarcane, origin, and cattle, second in soil production, and the third in corn, pigs, and horses. In this slide, it's possible uh, observe the ranking of agricultural production in Brazil according to the value. The soy occupied the first position. Now, I will to present the, some impacts of climate change on Brazilian agriculture. Some changes can be already observed. Gradual replacement of the eastern Oh, oh, sorry. Of the eastern, of the eastern uh, Amazon rainforest by savannas, the northeast region is becoming more arid, Intens and the intensification of rains in the southeast and south regions. So. I will present the, some impacts of climate change in Brazilian agriculture. In 2011, there was the biggest natural disasters in the mountains of Rio de Janeiro state. More than 1,000 people died. This year, we have floods and tornadoes in the south and droughts in the north. Erosion is a natural process that happens in different regions of Brazil. This can be accelerated by inappropriate agricultural practices and in intensified with climate change. According to Fall, it is one of humanity's biggest problems in ensuring food, water, and energy security. Erosion is advancing in the south, southwest, and the central west regions of the country mainly over sand soils and the areas of old occupation. Northeastern semi-arid region is the most susceptible to desertification. Nowadays, there, was, there are four sub-regions in the desertification process. Now, I will to present some strategies and challenges to increase the resilience of agricultural systems. Brazil has a very precise monitoring system that can predict the forecast up to six months ahead, called Brazilian Global Atmospheric Model. For monitoring and the control of the forestation and the fires, we, we have we have the, the five systems, uh, which, is, which, which is reports on the forestations, detects the forestations in real time, map yards in the process of deforestation, monitors forest management areas, and the WISIS warnings of fire outbreaks. Brazil. Brazil has two monitoring areas of high vulnerability, the, the central for monitoring areas of high vulnerability to, to climatic extreme events, with prediction of hydrological and geohydrological risks, monitoring droughts and their impacts. This month, was the first time that in, in arid region was reported by the center. We have, we, has, we have two, the National Plan of Conservation and Recovery of the Biodiversity. 
with Campus for Environment Preservation Areas in pre Private Properties. Recovery of native vegetation in the forest environment and preservation areas provided for in legislation. And biodiversity management and the value addition in different biomes. We have the national agricultural research systems composed by universities, public and private organizations and coordinated by Embrapa, Brazilian Agricultural Research Corporation, with research centers all over the country. There are going on research on genetic improvement for new climatic conditions, with experiments and controlled conditions and in field. We have also the public financing for the adoption of more sustainable agricultural practices. The ABC plan for adaptation and low carbon emission agriculture. We are constructing a national sustainable soil and water management plan with four strategic axes for promoters, integrated action by education, research, technology transfer, and supervision institutions for the sustainable management of soil and water resources. Expand the use of tools and information for land use plan with available information enabling lower risk of decision making. Create more incentives for conservationist farms and expand the adoption of good agricultural practices, such as payment for environmental services and the creation of quality seals for agricultural products. And identify degraded areas and propose recovery strategy for sustainable agricultural production and your ecological restoration. Embrap is developing sustainability agricultural indicators to develop systems that are more resilient to climate change. It is necessary, is it, it is necessary to generate and make available metrics and indicators on the performance of national agriculture in terms of sustainability. So, to finish my presentation, I have some considerations. The challenge of increasing food production to meet the growing demand of the world's population will be even greater with the ongoing climate change. Replacing practices that cause degradation with more sustainable technology is essential to make agricultural production systems more resilient to climate change. Can the current model of large-scale agricultural production with the high productivity, but with the great dependency on fertilizer and pesticides, be, con be considered sustainable? Will this model be capable of being resilient to ongoing climate change? The resilience of multidiverse systems has been shown to be greater than the monocultures just yet. And just as the solutions built with multidisciplinary and the multi multinational teams have proven to be more creative and more efficient. Together we can be more resilient. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, Aloisio, uh, giving us some special insight on uh, the Br Brazilian activities um, in order to tackle uh, climate change impact on agriculture systems and how to um, yeah, tackle this in, in the future, what can be done. But also, you showed us with your uh, pictures very vividly a future we don't want to see these land erosions uh, and uh, the probability of getting more desertification uh, with climate change, um, that the space for plants will be reduced. 
At the same time, uh, world population is increasing. How to feed all the people in the future if we look to climate change and less water available in that areas? So there, of, of course, there will be some some solutions, but the problem is is like a dog. In, in, at the moment, running behind a rabbit. The rabbit is the dynamics of the climate and, and the, the changes. And the dog running behind are we. So we are timely always behind of the problems. Climate change is increasing. And we are now in a position, and you showed us to, to us also very vividly, um, that we are not anymore in a position to, um, to, be, uh, uh, to be more in a position to be a reactive than rather than to preventive, to be preventive. That's our biggest problem in these days. Thank you very much, Aloisio. And now we, I open um, the question sessions. Uh, the question session and um, yeah, questions from the audience. Audience, thank you very much for this uh, insightful presentation. And uh, you talked a lot about the current challenges of the Brazilian agriculture. But um, looking back, there are also some very interesting experiences, uh, like conservation agriculture is a practice that was introduced in Brazil already a long time ago, and it's a quite uh, let's say compared to other countries, quite advanced stage of being implemented, like no tillage or covering uh, the ground, increasing soil organic matter and all these things, uh, increasing biodiversity is part of conservation agriculture. At that time, perhaps not in the light of climate change, but really in, in looking at uh, sustainability of agricultural systems. So what are your experiences with conservation agriculture? Is it a more sustainable way of doing agriculture and um, why is it not perhaps promoted more because we saw the big problems of fertilizers and pesticides and, and emissions, also greenhouse gas emissions and so on, uh, whereas supposedly conservation agriculture would be a good answer to that. So, and, and Brazil has a long experience with that. So did Embrapa and other researchers study it because you you have the the perfect uh, let's say living lab for that you know you have implemented it decades ago and you can perhaps uh, draw some conclusions on it you know? is that the promised future agricultural practice or what is the the best mix of uh, of future agriculture in in brazil i think uh, the embrapa there are many projects in different subjects and uh, I believe the solutions uh, so so disinvolved projects the, the of the base the more uh, ecological ecological uh, solutions uh, uh, there are small small portion uh, the, the land, the culture, uh, with uh, the systems, the agroecological systems. I believe uh, this future with these systems uh, uh, can 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 will 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 progress. For for more lands, for 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 other regions, for all the countries, uh, I have a dream. Good morning, everyone. I'm come from Brazil, from the State University of Ponta Grossa, and I would like to talk a little bit about Brazilian agriculture. In Brazil, we have two classes of farmers. It is defined by law. So 77% of the farmers are smallholder farmers or peasant farmers. And the, the, the last 23% uh, are the agribusiness ones. And the agribusiness ones has uh, almost 70% of the credit given by the government, the subsidized credit. And they have elected in the last election uh, the most part of the deputies, the senators. And now they are um, drawing and writing their own agenda regarding research. 
And I have the same opinion of uh, Dr. Granato when we consider in the areas of agroecological systems will be improved time by time. And I would like to invite you all to my presentation tomorrow and the session of uh, at 10 to discuss a little bit more about how uh, Brazilian agriculture works. Thank you so much. Thank you.